Hello, my name is Peter Riley. My company is Arvas Limited, and we are the UK distributor for Helite airbag technology expert in France. Um, we're active in motorcycling, horse riding, and cycling, but our primary focus initially has been in motorcycling. We've been trading for eight years, and uh, I've been very fortunate. I've been to a number of police and ROSPER and safety organization events across the country in the last seven or eight years. And uh, we, we, we've been in, we're, we're, we're very active in re attempting to reduce motorcycle KSIs. Where I think that we may be a little bit different is that we have a solution to motorcycle safety and motorcycle KSIs and what we're about to show is a little presentation about airbags and how they can dramatically alter KSI statistics. The, uh, the motor industry had a problem with, uh, with terrible KSIs in, in America in the 50s and 60s when, when it got up to about a thousand people a week were dying in motor cars. <clears throat> so the industry started looking at airbags and how they could significantly help reduce injury. And they developed them over a period of time. There was, an, a, a, there was a reluctance to build them into cars because they were putting the prices up and uh, all, 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 the punter, all the punters in America, all they were looking for was speed and good looks. They weren't looking for safety and it wasn't relevant. But by the end of the 20th century, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, motor, airbags in cars were becoming quite were becoming quite common. The use of airbags in cars has been incredibly successful. So an airbag, when combined with a seatbelt, has produced a dramatic drop in uh, KSIs in motor vehicles on, on, on Britain's roads. Uh, it's just unfortunate that that has not happened in the motorcycle industry where the, the KSI statistics still um, uh, are far too high. Um, generally speaking, motorcyclists account for 1% of road traffic, yet 20% of the KSIs. Um, so here in the UK, motorcycle airbags were, were kind of introduced seven or eight years ago. And uh, the first public sector acknowledgement of the, of, the, of the effectiveness of airbags was, uh, was when Thames Valley Police put their um, uh, rider trainers in their rider training school in, into airbags in 2013. Um, the FIM made airbags mandatory for motor GP riders, which was a significant movement in 2018. Uh, and in 2021, earlier this year, airbags were made mandatory for rallying. So, for example, everybody in the Dakar rally this year was wearing an airbag. If you crash in a motor car, you've got steel all around you and you've got a seat belt which stops you flying onto the steering wheel and you've got airbags all around you now in a motor car. If you crash off a motorcycle and fall onto an object or fall off your bike, you've got nothing other than the clothing that you're wearing with the armour panels in the clothing to protect you. And what, what is <coughs> so fundamentally different between motorcycle airbag protection and motorcycle armour is that is that airbags do trauma whereas our back armour just generally deflects trauma. In this example you're seeing here there's no way the armour in the back plate of that alone would protect that motorcyclist but because it's got an airbag in it he could survive that kind of accident. Four or five years ago, we were delighted to be uh, to get involved in a trial of airbag protection for, for, for London Ambulance. 
clearly they're used to picking up the victims of road uh, road traffic accidents and very quickly they they realized that that a motorcycle airbag was 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 a far far safer product than traditional jacket armor and uh, they offered us a, a degree of advice tested our equipment thoroughly and then decided to purchase it i think uh, the most apt apt quote that we've probably got from any expert in the country comes from them and um and if you if you you, you can see it in the slide that we're we're, we're presenting now Clearly, a motorcyclist travelling at speed is generating a significant force. And um, <clears throat> if you want to watch this slide, if you see this slide, when you see this guy crash, you know that kind of crash without an airbag is highly likely to be extremely, extremely risky or, or extremely dangerous. You know, there's there's a whole range of injuries that he could have sustained without an airbag. Um, because he's wearing one, he just gets up and walks away. One of the problems we've had as a business when trying to persuade people that motorcycle airbags are a good idea is the lack of statistical evidence, which is there to, which is there to prove how effective motorcycle airbags are um, I don't really have an answer to that question why aren't there more statistics all I could tell you is that we're only a small company uh, we've got 8,000 customers but we have got one hundreds of crash testimonials to people wearing airbags where quite clearly they would have been significantly injured or not as the case may be when not wearing one this is an interesting video in so much that it's probably the first time that a public sector motorcyclist owes his life to an airbag and while you're watching this just you've just got to realize that the speeds they're going are a lot higher than normal road speeds because it was a police training event and as you can see from there that that, that accident was quite severe um, why it's interesting is that the it was a, a highly experienced police motorcyclist who who was issued with the equipment and he was extremely reluctant to wear it he'd never had an accident before He'd been in the, the police um, the police force a number of years riding motorcycles. And, um, you know, he, it, it was one of the first times that he was wearing it when that accident happened. Um, he's made no bones about it that he believes that that, that, that piece of equipment saved his life. And uh, that's an outstanding testimonial to a, a product which is considered or hardly considered by the industry to be e e even relevant to motorcycle safety. Here again, this is a most unpleasant crash where the rider would quite clearly could easily have lost his life or broken his neck and uh, down to the, uh, the airbag, he, he just walked away. So, so when we're asking for empirical statistical data about the effectiveness of airbags there is very little if any um, there is there is significant evidence now that these things are making a major safety contribution towards the industry and uh, there are some exciting things happening particularly in motor racing where a number of race tracks are now looking at introducing airbags for junior age groups and making them mandatory because they do have the authority on their own race tracks to implement something like that certainly for juniors juniors learning to race motorcycles to to to, to sustain an injury in 2021 which by wearing an airbag protection vest wouldn't be sustained is there is a moral duty now um, 
to, to, to look very carefully at how these things are, uh, are, are, are used in, in, in reducing safety. As you saw from the previous screen and crash, you're just not likely to survive that kind of accident on a regular basis. And uh, there have been a number of um, outstanding safety studies done in the UK about what the accidents are, where, where the injuries are being occurred. Um, and uh, it's quite clear that if you look at motorcycle airbag protection, they would be highly active in an awful lot of the crashes, particularly illustrated on on this one, which is which accounts for the biggest five most likely serious accidents to motorcyclists. To illustrate the kind of misunderstanding to the to the motorcycle um, KSIs and. Uh, how to protect motorcyclists. Th th this is a good example because this slide was the leading authority in the UK. It was their recommendation to motorcyclists in what they should look at um, in respect of protecting themselves. Um, I'm glad to say it's been taken off their website because somebody probably must have highlighted the issues that I'm going to highlight about the slide. The, 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 the good thing is that on the, the number one item on the list is the correct item, which is a, a good quality helmet. But then for the leading authority in the UK to, to suggest that gloves and boots should be the two next most important items for a motorcyclist, it, it really does illustrate why the KSIs are in the state they're in in the motorcycle industry because there is no way that gloves and boots are going to significantly reduce KSIs killed and seriously injured on the British roads. And the fact that clothing um, becomes number four and then things to consider back protection. Well, I am glad that slide has been removed, but it is an excellent example of why the KSIs in this country are not coming down. When that kind of information is given to a young cyclist looking at the official site of uh, motorcycle safety in the country and being advised so badly. The, um, we're involved with a number of uh, safety organisations within the country who have done an, a lot of outstanding work to help reduce KSIs on motorcycles. Um, statistically, however, that has not been very successful, uh, which is frustrating, bearing in mind the effort and good work that has gone into attempting to reduce them. But as the great man said, there is a hint of the same organisations doing the same things over and over again and hoping to get improved results. Uh, and in, 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 re, in respect of reducing KSIs, they haven't achieved that. The elephant is in the room with motorcycle KSIs. The equipment is now available. If you want to reduce motorcycle KSIs in this country or any other country, you have got to use motorcycle airbags because without them, you are just not going to get a significant reduction in those injuries which are appearing in A&E departments week in, week out across this country. Thank you.